So Zach and I, we actually met in tech school. Um, we were both set to be crew chiefs. We met at Shepard Air Force Base. Um, he was kind of crazy and I was like, all right, like you're an interesting person. And then we both got in our assignments to Alaska and I was like, well, I guess we're gonna be friends because we're both going to the frozen tundra and I don't know anything about Alaska. Um, and then we got to Alaska and it was about a year after we got there that um, we decided to start dating and, and get married. And um, that was kind of fast um, because we, we had our son right away. Um, but I wouldn't change any of that for the world. Our son, he's phenomenal, super smart. He challenged us in a lot of different ways um, to grow as parents and individuals. And then shortly after we decided that we wanted to have one more and along came Peyton, our daughter, and she's you know, just as crazy and reminds me every day of her dad. We were stationed in Alaska for six years um, and then we put in to go to Hawaii and luckily, luckily enough, we were able to go out there and give them a, a Hawaii vacation for a few years before we um, were set to leave. Well, we split in uh, 2000, end of 2017, and then our divorce finalized in 2018. And it took us a little bit to kind of adjust to that new dyna dynamic of, you know, co-parenting versus being married. Um, but we started to kind of figure it out. Um, within that year of, you know, just working together and we always try to put the kids first. And we had different assignments at that time. It was, you know, we were supposed to be leaving in December. So it was about three months out and I was going to Canada, New Mexico and he was gonna go to Little Rock. He started to kind of vent to me about every like red flag that you would see for a suicide. He called me bawling and I was like, hey, like, what's going on? And he, he just kept saying, like, I'm in my room right now. The kids are out in the living room. Um, I keep thinking about us PCSing and me not being around them anymore. He's like, can you just come get them? He's like, I really don't want them to see me like this. Um, and I said, like, okay, like, I can do that. So I called him, I'm like, hey, like, I'm here. What, what's going on? And he's like, all right, I'll send the kids down. And I was like, mm. I was like, I still had this really bad, you know, feeling. I was like, I don't, I don't want you to be alone right now. Like, so I actually sent him the suicide response number. Um, and I, I was like, hey, like, I've been told, like, this is confidential. And it's just somebody you can talk to. And that way you're not feeling like you're burdening anybody else, anything like that. And he's like, okay. And so I was like, are you going to call him? And he's like, yes, I'll, I'll call them. And at that time, my kids were coming up to the car and I really didn't want them to like hear what I was saying. Um, so he's like, yeah, he's like, I'll, I'll call them. I was like, okay. So I hung up the phone and then I immediately had to like switch it over into mom mode again and, you know, trying to protect the kids from that. And I got a text that came up on my phone and it was from Zach. And it said, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I keep pushing. Um, I messed up at work. I think I have cancer and just going through all those red flags that we discussed and he's like I don't know why I'm still pushing anymore and I remember the property manager opened the door and him and the security guard stayed outside um, everything was dark except for the the bathroom door was slightly ajar and the light was on in there so like a bug going towards the light that's where I went to and I remember opening the door and all I could see was his head at the bottom of the bathtub and I went over and immediately opened the shower curtain and um, I, could, I couldn't believe what I saw. Um, I kind of blacked out. I guess I screamed, I don't remember. I didn't know how a parent is supposed to tell their kids that their other parent passed away. I immediately called my troop and I said, hey, can you please go be with my kids? I don't know how long I'm gonna be here. And she asked me, is everything okay? And I said, no. It's like, he's dead. And I don't remember quite what else she said after that, because I was just still sitting there thinking, how am I gonna do this? What am I gonna do now? About six months after Zach passed away, I heard that Chief Panero, the prior Diamond One, was gonna be out for a first sergeant symposium. And I, I reached out to one of my first sergeant friends and I was like, hey, like, I, I need to talk to him. And so that's what I did. I went and I, I shared my story. And I told him, hey, 
Like people are dying because they can't be with their kids. Like we're able to provide for our mill to mill, like we need to be able to do something for our military children too. Um, and it wasn't too long after that he shared my story with Chief Wright and by that summer the child custody assignment policy was put into place. So the policy allows um, military members to put in for an assignment to be closer to their children. Um, as long as the other parent has the full primary custody, um, they can at least apply to get closer to them um, to alleviate the financial stress as well as just the emotional stress of being away from their kids. I don't know how many that's going to help, but I do know like if it even changes one person's mind um, for following through with suicide, I feel like that's an accomplishment in itself. I think when we look at resiliency, I think we always just expect people to be resilient without giving them the time to build that resiliency. Um, I, Like I said, I still had to be a senior in CO, I still had EPRs to write, I still had a PT test to do. Um, there was nothing built into policies to give people that time to actually recover. I just had to hope I had really good leadership that looked out for me. and. Throughout that time, I started to realize like that's how we build resiliency, by taking care of our people and giving them that time to bounce back. Um, we can't just expect it. We have to be able to um, foster that. And I, now I look at it almost like a plate. We all have a different size plate of what we've been able to, to you know, carry. And some of us, our plates are bigger because we've had to you know, grow through more. But just because somebody has a smaller plate doesn't mean it's not heavy for them. Um, we just had to, you know, adjust throughout that time. I, I try to be super transparent with my story because um, I want people to know like, hey, we've all been through different things and there is people that, that do care and that want to help you. And I know like I would, I would rather have a, a terrible assignment um, as long as I still had, you know, my kids' father here. Um, you're just the entire... I guess piece of advice is um, like the mission's going to carry on, you know, but the people, you like, you're not replaceable. So I think that's been like the biggest thing that I could say is like reach out and talk to people.